Plus, man, with uh, us not making our own films, it seems like a lot of lies are and uh, stereotypes and myths are continuing to be propagated throughout our community about our history, about where we've uh, been, what we're doing right now, and where we're going in the future. And that definitely has to stop right there. Ridiculous. Uh, we, I want to talk to you about what's wrong with Hollywood later on in this interview. But let's talk about distribution. Why is it we can't get a highly dream of film and be able to know about the film in America and abroad? Well, my brother, this film, you know, just this is not to brag, this film came out year eight and has won over 20 prizes internationally from internationally recognized film festivals. Juries have spoken about this film as the most innovative film, yet it took us this long to get the you know the distribution meaning self distributed uh, showing opening of the film at the Avalon uh, at the time I opened Sankofa the monopoly was more better I could say in comparison to now is the monopoly is now completely exclusive if you do not have a clowning movie the booty call type or barbershop one two three ten twenty the repetition of that kind of film is very difficult to convince distributors to have the right uh, you know to have the right to access a theater and close down if the folks don't come in our case even now without advertisement our the theater is, is building every day yet we don't even have an advertisement money because we're independent all the money we had went into the making of the film uh, when I did Sankofa, it took me nine years to find the money. Uh, now it took me more, 14 years to find the money. So it doesn't matter what, you know, what the world of the the, uh, the cinema judgment is about my talent. But when it comes to the merchants who are in charge of distribution, exhibition of the culture of the people, uh, they're the gatekeepers of keeping everybody, and especially black people, without choice choice of you know different kind of stories right because it seems like it, it and this is nothing personal against Tyler Perry <laughs> but I just can't do it mm. I cannot do it because it seems like I've seen this film three other times and I'm not blaming him but why is it that Hollywood only wants those kind of films and I've heard the uh, the theory that well, these are the movies that uh, we will put out because these are the movies that are going to make us money. And we don't, we're not in the business of making films that don't make us money. They hide behind that. Thank you, my brother. Open, open the Washington Post. Open the New York Times. Uh, open the Los Angeles Times. Look at the movie section. You have, for white people or white filmmakers, you have good movie, silly movie, brilliant movie, stupid movie choices so you can go to anyone on the, if you felt to go to a horror movie you go if you felt like for you know laughing you go for you want to be seriously enriched you go so the the white population and the you know the crossover uh, conditioned audience go into this salad bar of choices but when it comes to for example black films this rarely rarely you'd find a, a film like the great debater uh, or to sleep with anger, Charles Bennett and Danny Glover. Uh, rarely, those movies are not distributed well. Money is not invested to distribute them because the system knows that it can continue to keep a society ignorant of itself. In so doing, be vulnerable and gullible to be exploited with any kind of movie. For me, I've never seen Tyler Perry movie, nor do I care. From just the poster of. You know, where I see too many black men with styrofoam uh, and dress. It, right. it, it, one <laughs> one time, maybe. Twice, maybe. Third time, I say, oh, I don't have the time Way to waste my time. So, the point is, he's entitled to be along, along the whole thing. But why, do not, why they do not allow serious African-American cinema uh, to come into play is the question that the community itself doesn't know. I mean, Danny Glover has been trying to do a film on the Haitian Revolutionary Toussaint L'Overture. To date, it hasn't happened. Um, if it was a white story, it would happen because there is uh, the interest in the market, uh, not in the market, in the merchants who market movies, they see some relationship 
family association, racial identification, etc. And so in the end, we live in a white supremacist paradigm of culture, mm -hmm. where we all races are victims of that cultural monopoly of white supremacy. Okay. Question, because I know some people will say, well, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, what about that movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and the other uh, African um, blood diamond? That movie made it big. Yeah, but that's out of Africa number 20. Out of Af Africa 1, out of Africa 2. White people, uh, 3, would fall in love in the middle of our turmoil, chaos, killing each other. We kill each other, and white people meet a British journalist, an American uh, scientist. It's a typical Tarzan, right. you know, the King Solomon oh, mind we stuff. Oh, you! Yeah, <laughs> so what they do is, we're in the background. We're still the one who are the appendages of white people. Right. You know, our story, so long as it remains as an appendage to other people, does not therapeutize nor transform us, nor nurtures us. This is the problem. In fact, it dehumanizes us, it dislocates us, not to know ourselves, and then to everybody who cares to know us, we continue to disinformate, inform the society. And so we victimize each other by a racist transgression of the African human being. 